Hello, good morning, and welcome back to the Kyle Connor YouTube channel. Um, we're, I don't know why I'm filming the video for this, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to just go see if our local Electrify America station is back up and running. They say it is, and if it can deliver full power. This is really just a channel for uh, you know, videos to happen where I don't think it's as important to put on our big reviews channel. They're not big videos. It's just a day in the life, more or less, of what I'm doing. Our cars, little tests here and there. And uh, a little bit of background. The local Electrify America station uh, went completely offline just a few weeks ago. And pretty much everything had died. And we, we told that story when we did a huge piece on EV charging infrastructure in America for our reviews channel. And uh, literally the next day, there were techs there working on it, trying to patch it back together. It's been about two weeks since then. And um, I've checked the app and it says almost the full station is up and running. So I wanna take the Rivian over because we actually don't have home charging at the moment. Alyssa, what happened to our home charging? Kyle, what happened to our home charging? Well, it blew up. It exploded. Yeah, so we haven't really done much about that. But I actually went to that charger um, just last week and it worked just great. That's fine, but the Rivian needs a lot more power than the e-tron does uh, because we need to see if we can get the full 500 amps out of these units. So it sounds like the station's back up and running. We're just going to make a quick little test to head over there, try it out. And um, we'll make another video, probably for our reviews channel, about why our home charging blew up. Not a good situation. So let's jump in the R1T. I think we're down to about 20% state of charge. We've received some software updates recently, and it just came back from service, which again, I'll have a whole other video on that coming soon as well. So jumping inside the R1T, it's kind of fun making videos for my own channel. This is going on mine. Oh, really? Yeah, just to do some silly things. It says press brake pedal to start. I haven't seen that before, actually. And it also shows mileage and percentage now. How about that as a setting? How about that? How about that? So what we're going to do is we're going to head to the Electrify America station in Loveland, Colorado. North up. Thank you. Which should be here. Boom. What I want to do is precondition the truck to make sure we can accept all the juice. It's really warm out anyway. What temperature is it? 109 degrees, so this thing will, <laughs> yeah, it's just sitting in the sun. <laughs> this temperature sensor is really off. The truck also got another software update to make the speedometer more accurate, because it was off by like four or five miles an hour. It was crazy. So like when you set the cruise at 85, you're really only doing 80. Yeah, I know, which is actually a good thing for me. <laughs> oh, but now you can sit at 85 and actually go maybe 85. It says preparing battery for fast charging. So let's throw it in drive. There's a Starbucks over at the charger. We just posted the IX review a few minutes ago, or the, uh, the review, the range test of that car. But we need to charge this up because, again, no home charging at the moment. And my car too. your car's pretty charged. It's at like 75%. Oh, yeah, that's right. I didn't pick you up in it. I picked you up in this. Right. So your car's got some juice. Well, we'll let this bicyclist scoot on by and let's head off to the Loveland Electrify America charger. What else do you do on your Memorial Day weekend? Go charge! <laughs> or Labor Day, sorry. I love charging. <laughs> so I don't want this channel to become an EV-centric channel, although we live a pretty EV-centric life. Yeah, we but have I, like four in our driveway right now. Yeah, but we also have you know updates on our cars and there's gonna be more combustion cars coming to the channel um, and, and to my garage. I don't know what. You don't know what. Yeah, we won't say what because who knows, markets are pretty crazy right now very crazy we, uh, we a lot of moving parts and it's just all good first world problems to have um so yeah we're just going over to the charger see if it can give us the couple things i'll be looking for at the charger to see how many are actually online out of the installed units and to see if it can give us the full 500 amps but are we gonna plug in ev on every single charger Cause no I feel just like the 350 kilowatt ones the like 350s are designed to give 500 amps the 150 kilowatt ones only give 350 amps no i get it i get it great i'm talking about like sometimes when you plug into the charger it might say it's available but it actually doesn't work so what if they say they're working but they're not actually working to their optimal charging limit that they're supposed to don't really care just need one that works yeah because i need one for charging tests and i hate having to drive to denver every two times a week to do charging tests at a failing EV go station. I can't even use that one anymore. Yeah, we don't have a reliable charger within a hundred miles of our house right But we now. do have one going in here uh, that we're, we're getting our own charger, but it's just not gonna come till the end of the year. So yeah. 
long you know, time. Long time. Got a couple more months left. Uh, so I, I guess when I get over to the charger, we'll explain what the issue is with this particular station, why it's very ABB centric that we're seeing at the moment, and um, yeah, see if they fixed it. Hopefully. There's only a couple stations that Electrify America needs to like get totally online and working and Dial like up. <laughs> Yeah, well no, it, no, fun. not even that. It's just like the one car and driver uses, the one we and TFL use, which is the Loveland one, the one that Motor Trend and Johnny Lieberman uses in Los Angeles, and then like half of the publicity of their charging network being terrible would go away. That's probably what they're doing. Yeah, I think that's why they fixed our station. <laughs> <laughs> I've been telling them, like, just fix our local station. No, they need to fix it for everybody involved, especially so I can take road trips and save more doggos, because right now I can't reliably get to where I need to go in Nebraska uh, for right. dog transport. So I, that's why that's been on hold. Right. Well, I have to say after the service, this thing is driving great, but that, that'll be a whole nother video. The network issues we will cover through our out-of-spec reviews and motoring channels, and it's really important that reliability increases ASAP as possible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're just taking the exit for the Electrify America station. We double-checked the app as well, and it said station one is in use, two and three are available, which are the two 350 kilowatt ones, if memory serves me correctly. And then number four, which was the only working one, is actually offline and not working. Um, my understanding about some of these issues, and again, you'll see this throughout our coverage as well, is um, in particular, ABB is really screwing us all, I think. And, and that's to be totally bluntly honest. They are not getting parts shipped to Electrify America. Now, I don't know what's happening on the back end. Did Electrify America not ask for the parts in time? Like, we don't know all sides of the story, but I will say the majority of network issues have been on ABB units, and we've seen this starting for a long time. Originally, the ABB units were all limited, or 95% of them were limited to 350 amps, no matter if it was a 350 kilowatt station or a 150 kilowatt station. And that all was popping up back when I originally reviewed the Rivian R1T, the white one on the 20 inch wheels, and I took that on a road trip, and I was like never getting more than 160, 170 kilowatt charging, and that's purely because of that amperage limitation, and I used primarily ABB units there. So I think they knew something was going on, and they derated the chargers, backed the peak off to try and extend their life. And I'm thinking that the summertime heat and just so many more EVs on the road pretty much have just destroyed these units. I don't know if it's the motherboard or the cable temperature sensors. I know that's a big issue as well. Um, but but the whole network is pretty much failing. Uh, and, and I would say the majority of issues, Signets have issues, the BTC units have issues, but the majority have been ABBs. And that's what's installed at our local station. And so here we are just pulling up. There's also construction going on here to the right. Do you think we're gonna see more chargers installed? No. Okay, that would be kind of neat. Now we just checked the app and it said one was in use and there's an EV6 using it. Uh, pretty neat. So we're gonna take either station two or three. What's weird is someone was here fixing them but they didn't replace the handles. See how they're still missing markers? Yeah. Take a look ahead. Of course they don't fix the handles. Yeah, you'll see this one has black uh, stuff. So what I'm gonna do is plug in here and see if we get A, charging. It says it's available, so I'm sure it'll charge. But B, have they unlocked it to 500 amps? My guess is no, but I hope to be pleasantly surprised. And that was the only working unit, and I just checked, and yep, and both of those were offline. I just saw the screen. So, bless you. Thanks. Let's plug this in. We just met some viewers who had their white Model Y, this nice family here. And uh, weird thing about YouTube, no, not not this one, that it's, one. It's literally held up. They had Colton do their full detail from our video. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I think that's great. Out of spec detailing, subscribe. And um, okay, it said charging didn't work, vehicle timeout. What's your opinion of that? Plug it in again. <laughs> if I remember correctly, this was the only handle that worked on this station. So maybe they got the stations online but they didn't fix the cables? Maybe it's a parts issue? What the heck? The EV6 is charging. I think we'll try this cable. Well, there's gotta be a reason to why the Well, EV6... they didn't even put the covers no, on them. No, no, the EV6 is not charging on this. I just don't think it's a brand new car. It's got Temtax. He probably doesn't know the difference between a 150 and a 350. Okay, mm -hmm. okay hold on. I just have to reload money. 
nannies. Reloading. Check your payment details. I don't know which card works and which one doesn't. I just go through them. <laughs> Lose cards, we gotta switch them out. It's hard to know. All right, there we go. Put 60 bucks on it. So, now we can swipe to charge. And we'll take the busted handle, which was the only one that was working. You can plug that in, Alyssa. Oh. What are you, what, what kind of position is this? There you go. They're, they're very hard. <laughs> it's not, not a Tesla supercharger, is yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> no, you gotta like manipulate it. And now, it. initiating charging, which means it's communicating. So, let's see what kind of juice we get. Cable kicked on. Yeah, so I don't think they fixed the cable. Even though this one says it's available, it, I've never been able to charge on this one in recent memory. And this one always works, but both say available on the screen. But this wasn't working a while ago, the whole pole yeah. yesterday? Yeah, the whole station was offline a couple weeks ago. The whole site was. So it actually turns out that the EV6 owner is a viewer and bought that car because of our videos, which again, amazing. This is happening more and more increasingly as, as people watch our videos. And it's just great to meet like-minded people. It's like I have friends wherever we go to charge. And um, the EV6 owner chose the 150 kilowatt just to be a little bit gentler on his battery. He said, hey, I have time. I'm running to get some food, whatever. I didn't need it to charge that quickly. And he said, if a leaf pulled up, he would have moved the car and let them have the Chatamo. So I thought that was a fair, fair compromise. Honestly, I'd probably do the same thing if I owned a car and he doesn't have home charging at the moment, so he's just DC charging it. We are definitely limited at 350 amps here, unfortunately. Um, yeah, so, so good that the charger's back online and running, but it's not a 350 kilowatt charger. This is essentially the same as a 150 kilowatt charger, unless you have higher voltage. If you have an EV6 or Ionic 5, 350 amps at 750 volts will still give you everything the car will need. So not the end of the world at all. I'm just happy the station's online, but there's no way that I can use this for charge testing uh, for some of these high power cars. So still be doing the trek down to Denver to do the DC fast charging recordings. And in terms of charging cost, I have the Electrify America Pass Plus membership, of course. So um, yeah, 31 cents per kilowatt hour. We've been here 10 minutes. We're already up to, I don't know, what's that? 30% state of charge, something like that. 32%, yep, put in 25 kilowatt hours. Big batteries in this thing. Basically, I say I'm gonna walk over to uh, Starbucks. Alyssa went into Target or PetSmart, I'm not sure which. She just walked away as soon as we started nerding out about EVs. I've put on Pet Comfort, which is the dog mode, Rivian's dog mode, so it keeps the climate on. It's a really hot day. And then you can see my pet is safe and comfy. So we'll just keep the cabin nice and cool, let this thing charge up for, I don't know, 40 minutes or so to get up to 80, 90%. And that will probably be enough charge for the week in this thing, especially without home charging. And yep, this one totally unavailable. Oh yes, Starbucks. Okay. <laughs> Mobile ordered it. So it can be a quick in and out. Sometimes, usually not. I feel like they put it, you got uh, mobile orders on the back line. Yeah, that's okay. We got time. And we have now completed charging at 70% state of charge. We've added 76 kilowatt hours. It took 30 minutes, really not bad. I set it to 70%. I don't really need any more than that. Anywhere I'm going is typically past the station anyway. So if I need to top up in this, no big deal. But I'm gonna take the IX on a road trip here pretty soon. So yeah, not sure this needed much more juice than this. There we go, cable back in. Let's see, that cost us, it was 30 minutes, 75 kilowatt hours, $24.11. We saved $9.33 for my $4 a month membership. Tell me how that makes sense. I think they need to work on their membership costs. It's too cheap, but that's just my suggestion. They also fixed my charge port from the service. That's working well. Maki rolled up, not viewers. First people of the day who are, at least didn't say they were viewers. Nice sprinter off in the distance over there. And there you go, just a quick uh, charging session. And we'll wrap up here pretty shortly. All right, well, there we go. A charging session successful in Loveland, Colorado. Haven't been able to say that in a long time. But not extremely successful. Right, so it charged the car, of course, but not at its, at its maximum. The ABB chargers still have this 350 amp limitation 
for most of them. I have run into a handful in the wild that will give this thing the full 217 to 219 kilowatts that it wants. I think we saw a peak of 170 kilowatts throughout the session. Nice thing is the Rivian app actually prints out the curve. Doesn't really matter. We know how the truck charges. Um, I need to do actually some real hardcore charge testing after some software updates, but that'll come in time. I have to do a lot of IX stuff while I have it this week. Definitely the truck is driving better. We'll have to make a whole video on this, maybe for the reviews channel, maybe for this one, but just it's so much softer. And now that the half shafts are retightened or greased or whatever they did, the thing just drives great. It drives so good. And uh, there you go, just a quick trip to the EA station. Pretty pleased to see the progress. Weird that they would send people here to fix the stations, but not fix the cables and to not upgrade them to full power. So it just tells me that like, what would they even fix to make them work? It must have been some internal stuff in the chargers that was causing them to be offline. One of them was offline for almost a year. And after we made that video, just a few days later, they were literally here fixing it. Coincidence? I think not. Oh, there's an I-Pace coming up. Take a look behind us here. In brown on the good wheels, you never see I-Paces anymore. With the doggo. With the doggo. Awesome. Love I-Paces. It's a really good car, and unfortunately, they've just gotten very expensive in the used market. They used to be cheap. They used to be like 40 grand. Best $40,000 EV you could buy, in my opinion. Not anymore, though. Welcome to the crazy market. So, I think that's a Kyle Connor YouTube channel video. Quick vlog, heading over to EA to see if it works. Silly stuff like this will just end up here on this channel. I don't expect anyone to watch it. It's just for my own personal fun to make videos that I want to make. What do you think, Alyssa? I think it's amazing. Do you actually? Well, I mean, I, th I think you... <laughs> <laughs> well, uh... <laughs> I'll actually enjoy this con content. This is the stuff I want to make. Well, yeah, people I'm, like vlog-style the... stuff, too. Well, that's the only thing I'm really interested in is out, you know, that, that'll end up on this channel. Could be car-related, could not be car-related. Could be dog-related. Could be... Yeah. Starbucks-related. Yeah, maybe I should do a Starbucks review series. This one has the green straw, which is rare. Most of them have the white straws. You're ridiculous. <laughs> I could make an hour long video reviewing this. <laughs> we could tour all the different Starbucks like we do different charging stations. I will not be editing that video. <laughs> we'll send it to Max. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> all right. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye bye.